Here's my top movies of 2023. These aren't necessarily going to be the best movies, but they are going to be movies that I think are most worth your time. So here they are, in no particular order. If you've seen me before, you know that I love me some Godzilla. And you know that I love Godzilla Minus One. A lot of monster movies are made to be popcorn entertainment spectacles, since giant monsters tend to look corny. Godzilla Minus One takes that idea and says, no, we have a serious message about the effects of war, the need for family, and the struggle of humanity, and we're gonna tell it by having Godzilla stomp through Japan. And it's done with pride and grace. One of the best Godzilla movies ever, and my default recommendation for anyone who's never seen a Godzilla movie before. America sure loves murder, so it's always strange to me that action movies are a lost art form here. The variety and tenacity of them is so much less than it used to be. Luckily we have John Wick 4 to pick up the slack. The sheer amount of action in here is extraordinary, but it's the quality that matters. You can tell this movie was made by stump people who knew how to stage an action scene that felt both stylized and real. It's a long one, but no cap, one of the best action movies of the decade. There's a bunch of spin-offs and prequels and possibly sequels being made in the John Wick universe right now, and I'm gonna watch them all, but I doubt any of them are gonna top this. I almost put Killers of the Flower Moon on this list. It's an incredibly written, acted, and made film that deserves its title of cinema. But ultimately I settled for putting Oppenheimer on this list, because as cinema as it is, it broke through to the mainstream and showed that a movie can be a work of art and make a lot of money without being based on a comic book or a toy. Every actor in here gives a career highlighting performance. Every form of special effects, from CGI to practical, is used for maximum impact, and Christopher Nolan proves once again that he's earned every bit of respect that he's garnered over the years. And when he asks us to support filmmakers instead of brands, he has the talent and the morality to back that statement up. Also, in case it's not obvious, Barbie Movie is not on this list. This one really flew under the radar. 1001 has been on this list since March. Nobody saw it, nobody talks about it, and I just think that's a shame. This is how you write compelling, morally complex characters in a modern world. I won't spoil the whole thing, but basically it's about a mother who kidnaps her own son from his foster home, and they basically go into hiding. It sounds morally dubious, that's because it is, and it hooks you in right from the start. I wouldn't call it a happy movie, but in this case, that's a good thing. It's an emotional roller coaster ride that leaves you drained and satisfied. A hallmark of excellent storytelling. This one's a double bill. Stories of famous businesses, they can be pretty boring, but if done right, they can also be a damn good watch. Probably my favorite example of this is The Social Network. Don't ask me how, but between Air and Blackberry, these movies, they make stories about shoes and old phones sound way more interesting than they really should be. And for that, they deserve your time. I really miss corny, cheap fantasy movies. Before Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter really upped the ante, Hollywood would pump out a bunch of these like clockwork. And while this one is not cheap, Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves really scratches that itch. You don't need to know what Dungeons & Dragons is to enjoy this movie, because it sticks with a straightforward cast of characters, gives them an interesting sandbox to play in, and sets an adventure in it. I'd say it's fun for the whole family, but then I think Disney's lawyers would be after me. This is my personal top pick, possibly of the decade, but we'll get to that caveat in a sec. Across the Spider-Verse sets a new bar of quality for all superhero movies to follow. Like all great sequels, it takes the ideas from the first one, pushes them further, and explores new ideas. Did some of those new ideas cause some labor disputes? Yeah, but to me that's a different topic. And at least they didn't try and replace that labor with AI. <coughs> Disney. <coughs> But I am a bit worried. See, while this movie is an incredible setup, its impact depends on beyond the Spider-Verse nailing the landing. Do I think it'll nail it? Yes, I do, but I've been wrong before. One trilogy that did nail its landing was Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Yeah, the MCU is probably past its prime, but I think given the chance and some talented people, something special can still come out of it every once in a while. James Gunn has taken that opportunity and ran with it time and time again. Never would I have thought that a story about a raccoon with a gun could elicit such strong emotions for me. But it did. I didn't like the second one, but the first Guardians of the Galaxy, one of my favorite MCU movies. So the third one could have gone either way. Ultimately, I think this one serves as a great send off to the characters and James Gunn's time at Marvel. And seriously, I bet Marvel really regrets trying to cancel James Gunn. 
I'm not sure if this is a great movie. I'm not even sure if I like it, to be honest. But it did leave an impact, and that's worth something. Trying to describe Bo is Afraid is like trying to explain compassion to a Hollywood executive. It's just not gonna work. Watch the trailer, and if it doesn't scare you, watch the full movie. It's a roll of the dice how you'll feel about it afterwards, but you're definitely not gonna forget it. There's a weird subset of movies that are so bad, they're good. Sometimes it's a happy accident, but sometimes it's done on purpose. Cocaine Bear knows that the story it's telling is silly and campy, and it goes full ham with it. The acting, the camera work, the editing, it all just gives off a B-movie vibe in all the right ways. I saw this movie in theaters with a bunch of strangers, and we literally spent the entire time heckling the movie, making jokes, having fun, and it was a blast. All right, that's all I got for this one. Did I miss something? What's your favorite movie this year? Let me know in the comments below, and Happy New Year, everybody. I'll see you next time. Take care.